Let's get into some scripture here. We're reading from Psalms 45, verse 1. It says, My heart overflows with a pleasing theme. I address my verses to the king. My tongue is like the pen of a ready scribe. Man, that's so poetic. You know, we can look at scriptures like this and kind of get lost in just the wonder of it. You know, you can't help but read a scripture like this and just feel David's awe for God. And, you know, I think first things first, it just kind of makes me stop and wonder, have I lost my awe for God? You know, I remember going back to when I first got saved, when I first was filled with the passion, the excitement, the knowledge of God. It was like the whole world was turned upside down. And I remember, I couldn't stop talking about it. I couldn't stop telling people. And you know, something interesting happens when you go through life and you go through seasons and you go through ups and downs. You begin to lose that awe. And a lot of times I'll run into believers that have been saved or walking with the Lord for 10, 20, 30 years. And they'll just be like, man, I, I just don't know where that went. But it's almost like a continual reminder to get back to that. You know, I think that part of it is the reality of this life. You know, I think about the parable of the seeds. And in that parable, you know, one of the things that causes the seeds not to grow is the worries, the cares, and the concerns of this life. And I think that that's applicable even to us believers. Maybe it doesn't pull us away from God in the, you know, direct sense that we just disconnect from God. But maybe it pulls us away from our passion, our wonder, our curiosity, our awe. So I can't help but read this psalm and, and hear him say that my heart overflows with a pleasing thing. Man, stop and think about that just for a moment. How many times do we have our heart just overflowing with the cares, the concerns, the schedules, the busyness, the bills? the obligations, the responsibilities, the hurts, the heartbreaks, all of these things begin to be the theme of your life when really it should be a pleasing theme, a theme that represents the goodness of God in your life. Then he goes on to say, I address my verses to the king. Think about that for a minute. In your current scenario, situation, whatever you're going through, you have certain words that are coming out of your mouth, certain ideas, certain thoughts and expressions. You might go through the day thinking that, man, this sucks, this is whack, this is tough, this is horrible. Are those verses addressed to the king? Or are they addressed to the flesh? See, I don't know about you, but for me, I know that not only is it a good thing to address my words, my thoughts, my 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 love towards God, but it's also good for my spirit. It's good for my environment. It's good for my family. It's good for every person that I come encounter with. It's good because this is the life of a believer, a person who expresses their verses to the king, to the authority, to the ruler, to the one who owns it all. It really just puts it in a different perspective when you think about that. And then it goes on to kind of double down on that. And it says, my tongue is like the pen of a ready scribe. You know, one, another translation actually says, my tongue is like the pen of a ready writer. In other words, your tongue is the instrument of life and of praise and of thanksgiving and of glory unto God. Are you using your tongue to write out the Psalms, the praise, the glory to God in your daily life? You know? I know for myself, there's many a times where I'm not, where I'm using my tongue to write words of worry, to write words of insecurity, to write words of doubt. And of course, that is not the reason why God has given you this gift, this ability to use your words, to use your voice, to be a ready writer unto the glory of God. 